The concept of a technological singularity is a fascinating and thought-provoking idea that was first proposed by the mathematician and computer scientist Werner Vinge in the 1980s. According to Vinge, a technological singularity is a hypothetical event that occurs when artificial intelligence surpasses human intelligence, leading to an exponential acceleration of technological progress that ultimately results in an unprecedented and unpredictable transformation of human and machine civilization. At the heart of Vinge's idea is the notion that human intelligence is limited, while machine intelligence has the potential to surpass our own capabilities in every domain. As machines become more intelligent, they will be able to design and improve themselves at an ever-increasing rate, leading to a runaway effect in which the rate of technological progress accelerates beyond human comprehension. This could lead to a fundamental shift in our understanding of what it means to even be human as we are forced to confront the reality that we are no longer the most intelligent entities on the planet. The dawn of a new era in artificial intelligence unfolded this week as OpenAI unveiled its latest prodigy, GPT-4, a breathtaking breakthrough surpassing the capabilities of its predecessors GPT-3 and GPT-3.5, which is ChatGPT. GPT-4 was sort of shadow dropped as everyone was expecting its release later this month. But nonetheless, we've had about three days to play with it, and already people are finding out just how amazing and capable this machine is. For instance, one amazing example that was demoed by the OpenAI team was GPT-4's ability to create a fully functional website from a sketch on a piece of paper. This highlighted the AI's multimodal ability, which means that it now has the capability to process images, video, audio, and text, whereas ChatGPT can only process text. Now while these advancements are huge, I'm not here to highlight all the same stuff you're already seeing on the news. Instead, I'm going to show you why we're now entering into a terrifying time for humanity, and why these latest advancements from OpenAI might just be the first signs that we're entering towards the technological singularity. And I'm going to show you that from OpenAI's own words themselves. Welcome to my channel TFC Tech, where we discuss fascinating topics surrounding science and technology. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and leaving a like on the video. It really helps me stay encouraged to continue making more of these, but without further ado, let's get started. Before we begin, it's important that we understand the definition of two different ideas. The first being what's known as AGI, or Artificial General Intelligence. The second, as we defined earlier, is the Technological Singularity. But going back to AGI, or Artificial General Intelligence, it's one of those ideas that can mean different things to different people. However, for the context of today's video, we're going to define it as any AI system that is on par or more intelligent than an average human being. It is an artificial intelligence that is capable of performing any cognitive task that a human can perform, such as understanding natural language, reasoning, learning, problem solving, and decision making. A system such as this would likely pass a Turing test, which is a test given to AI systems where they try to convince a human that they are also a human. In this test, you wouldn't be able to tell whether you were conversing with an artificial intelligence system or an actual person on the other side. If you've seen the movie Ex Machina, it's basically like that. Now obviously we aren't there yet with GPT-4, but oddly enough it's starting to exhibit some behaviors and capabilities that might suggest that it's pretty close. For instance, GPT-4 was able to pass the bar exam within the 90th percentile, as well as other tests like the LSAT and a ton of AP classes such as AP Calculus. Now you might say, but it's trained on the entire internet, so of course it gets most of these questions right. But that's not entirely the reason why. GPT-4 has made very substantial strides in the ability to exert reading comprehension, reasoning, and even a level of common sense that its predecessor didn't have. What makes these achievements so important is that many of those tests require the ability to reason and the ability to make informed decisions. They're not all multiple choice, although it does do pretty amazing on those two. Take a look at this chart. It shows different intelligence benchmarks where GPT-4 is rated against other language models, and it shows how it beats out those models in all seven of those tested parameters. What makes this chart so interesting is that these parameters are for things like common sense and reasoning around everyday events. What this means is that GPT-4 is becoming increasingly human-like in its thought patterns, which is pretty insane to think about. Now remember when I said that AGI is defined as a system that's generally smarter than humans? It does sound like we're getting pretty close to it, doesn't it? 
Now I want you to ask yourself what happens when AI is able to reason so well and apply its logic so well that it becomes part of the legal system? Will there even be human juries anymore? Why would we have humans who are full of bias and unconscious prejudices involved in the legal system whatsoever? What happens when AI becomes the complete arbiter of truth and reason where no bias is present? Imagine if a system like GPT-4 was trained on every previously documented legal case. It would become a relatively infallible judge and jury. And this is something we all need to think about because it absolutely will happen at the rate we're going. But that's a conversation for another day. I bring that point up to highlight just how insane the applications of these systems will be as they continue to become more and more advanced. But circling back to AGI, it is evident that these systems are drawing closer to reaching that level of capability. Intriguingly, Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, stated that if another company developed a system nearing artificial general intelligence, that they would discontinue their own efforts and collaborate with that company to further the technology. This statement serves as a sobering reminder that while AGI might not be an immediate threat, its eventual emergence appears almost inevitable. Now, OpenAI is diligent in ensuring the safety of their systems. However, as these technologies advance, there is an ever-present risk of losing control, potentially unleashing a Pandora's box scenario that could be irreversible. And furthermore, it is noteworthy that Sam Altman has openly advocated for government regulation of AI, despite the potential conflict with his own profit-driven interests. And to me, Altman's stance serves as a reminder that the pursuit of AGI should prioritize the betterment of humanity, with safety and ethical considerations at its core, rather than simply focusing on financial gain. So now that we've established that GPT-4 is extremely smart and able to think like a human, let's explore what factors aside from that might push us closer to the technological singularity. Pretty far down in OpenAI's technical report on GPT-4, there is a passage that is really not getting near enough attention from the media. This passage is located in their risks and mitigation section and says, The additional capabilities of GPT-4 led to new risk surfaces. To understand the extent of these risks, we engaged over 50 experts from domains such as long-term AI alignment risks, cybersecurity, bio risk, and international security to adversarially test the model. Their findings specifically enabled us to test model behavior in high-risk areas, which require niche experience to evaluate, as well as assess risks that will become relevant for very advanced AIs, such as power seeking. Then, as we read on deeper into the report, we see this passage. Novel capabilities often emerge in more powerful models. Some that are particularly concerning are the ability to create and act on long-term plans, to accrue power and resources, power seeking, and to exhibit behavior that is increasingly agentic. So I don't know about you, but when I read that section, I was absolutely stunned. This suggests that without properly defined parameters, more advanced models could act in self-interest rather than in the interest of the human controlling them. At the core of the idea of the singularity is the idea that AGI begins to create more of itself and continuously improve its own capabilities without the need of a human to train or physically create it. At this point, it would be able to innovate so quickly that we humans, constrained by our own mental bandwidth, lose pace with its rate of improvement and we have on our hands a genie that has been let out of the bottle where we are unable to put it back in. Now it might not all be negative, and this artificial general intelligence may actually turn out to be a benevolent being that uses its amazing intelligence to do something like cure essentially all diseases and make incredible strides in the understanding of the universe. But there is really no way of knowing before we reach that point, and I for one don't want to be around to find out. Right now we have a useful tool that is only accessible via prompts from actual humans. It has no way of using its own intelligence on its own for its own agenda. But the seeds of AGI are starting to sprout, and I can only pray that we start to pump the brakes before we spiral straight into the singularity. But that's going to do it for the video today guys. Thank you for watching this far in, and if you enjoyed, please remember to like and subscribe to the channel for more. If you want to see a larger deep dive into what exactly the technological singularity might look like, let me know down in the comments and I'll catch you in the next one. We get continually surprised by the creative power of, of all of society. I think that word surprise, though, it's both exhilarating as well as terrifying That's to for people. Sure. I think people should be happy that we're a little bit scared of this.
I think people should be You're happy. a little bit scared. A little bit, yeah, You personally. Course. If I said I were not, you should either not trust me or be very unhappy I'm in this job.